What's up, guys? Hey, What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome to the best talk show in the land. Hey, you hey, are hey. tuned into Lipstick and Cognac Show. My beautiful hey, hey, co host, hey. Lipstick. It's your girl, Lipstick. And I'm your boy, Cognac. And we are Lipstick and Cognac, your host of Adult Conversation with an alternative twist. A judgment-free zone where we discuss all things, no matter if you are a ruler, a rainbow, or, or a unicorn. unicorn. So how can people follow us, Lipstick? You can follow us. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Lipstick and Cognac. It is spelled the way it sounds. Twitter, Lipstick underscore Cognac. And YouTube, Lipstick and Cognac page. And for people who can't spell in the back, that's L-I-P-S-T-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-O-G-N-A-C. I knew Thank he was going to mess that up. I knew it. <laughs> I got you, like, it right, sis. In the back. Uh, <laughs> gotta get that well, neck in there. Well, guys, what's up? So we're going to talk about how your week went, Lipstick. Yeah, my week my week was awesome. My weekend was great. I spent time with my in-laws. I know. You had your phone on Do Not Disturb, I yeah, see. Because yeah. you were not picking up my phone call. No. <laughs> if I'm chilling with somebody else and you're not in that party, you're not invited. <laughs> You get on my damn nerves. You're going to miss this phone call. <laughs> Decline. Especially when I'm with my boo. Mm-mm. So, how it was Easter? If it ain't money, I ain't picking it up. Anyway, how was Easter? Easter was, I mean, I just, I, I didn't go to church. I refused to go to church on Easter. Sorry. Really? Y'all can sue me. Uh, yeah, because everybody and their mama want to come Easter, but you don't want to come any other time. Mm. I just feel like his people, you know, people show, show their suits and everybody want to get an Easter speech. And this is where lipstick is, you know. This is my bad, my one bad trait. What you do? I don't like seeing the kids singing on Easter. You don't? No, it's something about children singing that's just, yeah, they can't sing. That is, we are not going to do it to the babies. We not, because they are precious, and some of them can't sing. Like, when they can't sing, they can sing. I went to Destiny But World I don't want to hear no, no. No, 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 no. Because so I went to Destiny's World Church. Well, my Easter was awesome. I okay. spent time with. Did you with, eat some chocolate for Easter? I didn't, but I spent time with Bay and his family. Okay. And um, I want me some Robin. We eggs. went to Destiny World Church in Osteo. That was a nice church, nice um church experience. They had the most beautiful little girl out there who was dancing. She had to be okay. like four or five years old. I was about old. to say, was she singing? And she was just, it was like a cute little Barbie doll. She was just like, it was beautiful. They had a beautiful, now, I do like beautiful place. Looking cute and dancing. Yeah, and it's I was just about the same. Oh, I'm like, oh, the cute little baby. So I was, That's I was here for the babies. Four. Well, I call them babies. Oh wow. Okay. Yes, I'm here for the babies. <laughs> but other than that, I had Leave a physical to today. Could I think um, having a physical really important for men of my age of 25 and no, up? No. Uh. Uh. Having we a are. physical period it's for important men is important, especially because the older you get. You got to know what's going on with your body, man. Yes. If you don't know what's going on with yourself, who's, you know, like my dad had a stroke at 60, so it was truly a wake-up call for me, and this is I'm not ever going to take lightly. And my blood pressure was 100 over 54. That's good. Yeah, so I'm really happy. I feel like my working out and my dieting and things like that is actually working for me instead of against me because people, I will say this, once you're gone, you're gone. And why cut your life short? Because you don't want to do right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's how I truly believe. I feel like your body is your temple. That's part of the church. So if you treat it like you do church, you will live long and prosperous. That is so true. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. However, let's put this caveat in there. (laughs) Because it's a lot of men that do not want to go to the doctor. Like, Mm -hmm. period. And I understand that. It can be uncomfortable, especially once you get to a certain age or you have certain risk factors in your family and you have to get like your prostate check and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I get it. But do you really want to compromise a lifelong of memories versus somebody just doing something uncomfortable for a couple of seconds? A professional somebody at that. Like that's their job. I told my dad, you want to die of booty cancer? <laughs> And I'm not let people who actually have, but I have to like yeah, be my daddy died from humor cancer. from it because my dad. Because <laughs> if you if you just tell them like that, you get to get checked. Well, like you yeah. say, they won't get booty cancer. Like, oh, I need to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just something about just saying certain things make 
my and dad do like it. Like with my with my daddy, my dad is deceased and he died from colon cancer, and um he had he had symptoms for years. And one of the reasons why he didn't get it found, he didn't find, they didn't find it as early as they could have, was because he did not want to get the rectal exam. He need um, um, so now he's missed all of his grandchildren being born. He's missed me going off to college, getting married. Well, he saw me go off to college, but graduating college, getting married, graduating from getting my master's, like all of these memories you miss just because you don't you want don't to get want a to rectal check your exam, health and your I, prostate exam. And so, I truly agree with that. And, when, and with that being said, if you know stuff like that happens in your family, you need to be more diligent about going sooner. Like for me, I go every three years to get a colonoscopy. Yes, that stuff is nasty and you do have to drink the whole thing, but you don't even feel it when they put the tube up you. Like you're asleep. They put you, you to sleep. No, they give you the good stuff too, the propofol. <laughs> I'm not pissed off I say about that drug But, but, hey. they, but they wake it, It's not enough Like you go to sleep They wake you up And then you're done And you can go on With the rest of your day No discomfort No nothing Well I hope y'all Really enjoyed that A man's health segment <laughs> um, and, and women Cause and I'm a women, female And yeah. I'm getting them done So now Oh yeah And check your breasts You know Get you somebody To squeeze on them And See that's why mom. You know You're doing too much sis <laughs> Every month, my husband gives me my breast exam. Does he? Yeah. What he do, sis? I, I have to show you off camera. Oh, okay. yeah. Shout well, out to Zaddy. The nasty <laughs> ass. <laughs> you can do self checks, but it's always funner. <laughs> when somebody I mean else do it. <laughs> yes. Let's get this thing cracking. Yes. Don't be surprised if by the end of 2019, y'all see me up here with a fat belly. No, I'm not pregnant. Just for all my aunties and cousins. Watching. That that would be kind of hard to find out on rolls now. Like. I know, like no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. But you know, them breast exams lead to other things. So moving along. Yeah. So let's talk about the news. What's in the news in Atlanta and around the world? Not the news. Did you have the but, that um, news? Yes, the had, news? You know, I'll be signing Mississippi Coastal News. <laughs> I no, will nobody, always say that. If you're from Mississippi. Mississippi, you would not know that. But she was like, Mississippi Coastal News. You said that fast, too? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's just Mississippi Coastal News. <laughs> okay, moving along. Okay, well, let's get serious. So I'm going to start off with T.I. on Easter. He helped free, pay out some bells for a lot of he people. He did that with the, with the assistance of somebody else, though, didn't he? Yeah, but anyway, he did it, and I thought that was very nice. No, I'm not I'm not taking away from it. I think it was him and some other um, famous. Oh, okay, so you're saying you yeah. get some other props. Well, yeah. I think that was very well done, T.I. Yeah. It's one thing I can't say I'm very proud of you of doing. Sometimes. That is all in the, East, uh, in, the, um, in the spirit of Jesus. Yeah, really want to be yeah. To be honest, honest about yeah, it. I I really want to applaud you for that. Um, that's very commendable. Shout out the tip. Yes, and um, Thank second, you. I want to have so that shed a light on something gonna make me really sad. Um, a fifteen year old boy killed himself. Oh yeah. Um, he wasn't fifteen. He was only in the eighth grade. He was fifteen. No, he was in ninth grade. Wasn't fifteen? He? Okay. Yeah, he was fifteen. Um. God, it's going to make me emotional because I am part of the LGBT community. And I know how it was when I was in high school. And, you know, you're going to get picked on, you know, just because you're different. And kids don't understand things as different. But I never thought in my lifetime of killing myself because of me mm. having different thoughts. Um, I can't imagine what that little boy was going through. Mm -hmm. You know, because at home, my parents didn't like it. No, put that out there. Mama Diane and Daddy Watch did not like it. <laughs> well, but well, were you aware of it at that young of age? I was. Okay. What, I was. Were they aware of it? They were. Okay. I'm very, you know. Well, um, what age were you when you came out? Like 16, 17. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, um, my we had some fussing in my household. I'm not going to keep it all the way real, but my parents loved me at the end of the day. But I don't even think it was the parents. Like, the, he was no, getting bullied, No, yeah, right? he was. I'm about to, I'm about to get into that. No, no, I was just. Yeah. Saying. As far as for <laughs> him, um, he was getting bullied in school, and some kids handle things differently. Honestly, yeah, they do. You can't tell somebody how to hold their stress level, what's going, to, or not stress them out. But with that being said, um, he murdered himself because no, that's yes, not murder. He killed himself. He I'm sorry. Suicide. Yeah, he committed suicide. I'm sorry. You right. Correct me. He committed suicide because of him getting picked on for being gay, and his name is Nigel Shelby. And that's a name I'll always remember. And I feel like my community, I'm going to preach to this real quick. 
we are quick to help prize black black baby cries prize for like black people for gay things and i don't see for me just keeping all real things for lgbt youth doing things around that to help them teach them showing up we all paying eight dollars getting clubs and all this other stuff i'm just keeping it all the way real and you see hiv van outside of the club but as far as like doing like workshop for teens things like we don't have that so i would really love to work on that now I think Sooner part than later. of the issue with that is a lot of parents are going to shut that down. Just going back to what you were saying from the beginning about yeah. everybody, parents are not, they have to wrap their mind around it. And if it's a juvenile, I'm not going to get my child doing it because I don't like my child doing it. You get what I'm saying? So and, it's and a, a day though, change. and I get that, but in a day though, if your child is gay, goddamn it, he's going to be gay. No, that's not what I'm saying. I think, you know, so instead of trying happen, to fight your child and suppress your child and make your child depressed, you. Things like this happens. No, I'm, and I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm with not. You. I'm not saying I get what you're saying, but I'm not finna like sugarcoat this anymore. Like, no, that's not what I was gonna say. What I was gonna say. Your was, child is gay. He's gay. In order it is for what it, it is. to happen, if you do something like that for the youth, you also have to have the resources available to the parents at the same time, and that'll help it become more acceptable. Yeah, I think works out for everybody because yeah. in that it's 2019, people are gay and living their best life. Like I told you, lately, the kids are different from how I grew up. You know, they. Do things a lot differently. So it is what it is, but we have to be out there for our babies mm -hmm. and our children. And I truly agree with that. And we're going to do a five second pause for Nigel. So if you are watching, can we please pause for five seconds for him, please? Starting now. Okay. That was not five. That was five that seconds. That was not. You did one, two, three, four, five. Not I did. one second. You know how that we learned it? How you going to learn that? One Mississippi. You know what? That's we had not to talk about Mississippi. That, no, I'm serious. <laughs> that's that's how I learned to count a second. But in a day like Nigel, may you rest your beautiful young soul. Even though Cognac cheated you out three years. I did. I'm sorry, but you know, I love you. I really do. Yes. But well, let's talk about on to some yes, yeah, some um more lighter news. Okay. Um, housewives <laughs> reunion. <laughs> Baby, when I tell you I live for Cynthia that whole last part three, I was so proud. That's the proudest I ever been of Cynthia Bailey. When I say, yes, Cynthia, you better speak on it, baby. Because I felt like, to me, I'm just being I'm honest. I'm still stuck how you go from R.I.P. to dang on Housewives. I said on a lighter note. We should have just ended on the R.I.P. Go ahead, boo. Go ahead. No, but I mean, how, do you, ahead, how do you Cynthia. feel about the reunion? Go ahead, Mama Cent. How do you feel about it? Honestly. Go say what you're going to say. No, how do you feel? I'll let you go. It was entertaining. What else? <laughs> you get on my damn nerves. Go ahead. No, but um, to be honest, I feel like this. If you are a friend, you are, you have every right to be friends who will be friends with, regardless of what they do or how they do it. And I, and I truly believe that. And if your friend cannot understand not be suffering something that's celebrating you in that moment, Y'all not friends anymore. Because like Cynthia said, Marlo, she threw your ass away too. And I was like, <laughs> I did one of them Paddle the Bell Rose. This I was like, I'm say about yes. Part. Because I think from the way the footage was edited. Yeah, editing is everything. That's how they did it. And what really happened, both of them had valid points. They did. Where Cynthia got Nene, in my opinion, where she won the argument was if if we supposed to be that close of a friend, you can't give me that benefit of the doubt. Then why are we even? Why were we even friends? Were we really even friends? Because they fell out over. That's really petty. It's really petty. It's it's, and it's I get, petty. But as I hell. get the principle because she said you made me tell about Yavana. Now you can't do the same thing about Kenya. But at the end of the day, like, is that worth throwing a friendship over? It's not friendship away over. Like, it's no. really not. It's really not. It's really petty. And I think that. Once she's calmed down, they got past this season, mm -hmm. and she's in a different place mentally. Like I said, the girl is going through some Yeah, she is, so I'm not going to knock that Once she's in a place mentally, she'll realize that, okay, I overreacted. Just okay. like uh, even Marlo, even though Marlo was throwing stuff, you know, instigating, she did say they'll be friends again. She did. I give Marlo that. Marlo, you did do that. Yep. But let's get into today's topic. And class is now um, in I don't okay. session. The bell has rung. The bell has rung. If you are late, you are tardy and you are going to detention. So Where is this detention in Principal Duber's office? Who is Principal Duber? <laughs> you know, I'm going to use all my missing references. That was the seventh grade principal. 
I will never forget him. Principal Duber. <laughs> Did y'all call him Duber? No, his name was Duber. I'll give you the same. No, we're making it fun. He was really a black. He was like one of black principals, so we respected him in our community. I don't care. Kids are cruel. Like I don't know, but like. Respected. Yeah, but like I'm just being honest, it is what it is. Okay, but go ahead. With the what topic. is the topic about lipstick? So the topic today is how did Principal Duber get through the whole school year without getting taken? No, I'm just <laughs> it's about transgender students' admission into Morehouse. Mm. So mm -hmm. okay, recap. If you guys watched us last week, yes. we kind of mentioned we have a student um, that's here as our guest. You want me to give it all away? Yeah, give it all away. Okay. Give it to him all, raw and uncut. His name is no King Lions. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. <laughs> King Lions is in the building. King Lions is a Morehouse student. He but is. But before I go into that, let me give you the full topic. So Morehouse has just pa passed a transgender, what is it called? Statute or bill or whatever it is. It's a policy. Gender and, uh, identity admissions and... Matriculation. Policy. It's gender identity admission and matriculation policy. policy. So basically they're letting people who identify, well, I would say men, who identify as men. Yes. But they do not do not necessarily have to be born a female. So it, even though your birth certificate may, I'm sorry, man, your birth certificate may say a female, female as long as you self-identify <laughs> as a male, you are allowed to matriculate at Morehouse. Yes. And from what I heard, Spellman passed this bill or this policy oh, wow. a, a few a years go. before. A year. What, it was spring 19? Fall, fall 2019. So they just passed it. Wait, it's 2019 now. Yeah. I mean, not fall 2018. Fall 2018. Yeah, they say, just wait, passed it now. in Spellman <laughs> for if you are a male that identified as a female. So now, Spell, I mean, Morehouse has basically, everybody's on the same page with it. They have the same policy in place. And now we have a Morehouse student here, King Lyons. Yes. So how do you yes. feel about it? Yes. What is your, like, how do you feel about that policy? Well, to be honest, and I, 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 no, I'm going to be all the way honest. I feel like as a straight female, I really don't have a dog in that fight. Like, I really, no, 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 I'm not finished. I am, I am so not tired finished. of that cop out ass thing you but be if doing. if you will let me finish, Goodness. I will let you know. I feel like I don't have a dog in that fight because I really can't say nothing that's going – I can't relate. However, personally, I feel like if you identify as a male, you should go to Morehouse. If you identify as a female, you should go to Spelman. That's it. Okay. Okay, I can – That's the policy. I can agree with that. All right. Well, you guys, we really finna um, take this quick recess break. Say to Norland.com, so the cognac, or you watch the Norland Facebook page, because going up next is our guest. We're going to dive real deep into this thing. Y'all don't want to miss it. Make sure you tune in to Norland.com, say lipstick and cognac to catch the rest of this show, because it's about to go down on a good conversation. Yes. So we about to get it, people. We're about to do we about it. about to go to break. All right. <laughs> your girl lipstick and it's your boy cognac and we are lipstick and cognac your dynamic relationship duo where we talk all things relationship every tuesday from 4 p.m to 5 p.m eastern standard time on rollingout.com and rolling out live via facebook y'all what we talking about we talk about it all. We talk about the cheating, the people that do right, don't do right, the people that might want to slap your head on your mom, on your daddy, your sister, your uncle. I don't know about knowledge. slapping my mama, <laughs> but we're going to talk about it all, y'all. Make sure you check us out every Tuesday. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a fun there. time. Ow. This week on the kitchen. Yeah. Got translate. I just wanna answer what y'all ask me. Got great. DJ DBI. All right. Chef Chris. Porcelain Gold. Thought, 
God blessing me often. I'm still up in the apartment. Right. I know they keeping my deposit. I got burn holes in the coffee. All I know is old. All I know is bold. All I know is those. Look inside the dome. Stick and come at your show of adult conversation with an alternative twist. A judgment free zone where we discuss all things relationships, yes, no matter do. if you are a ruler, a rainbow, or, or a, a unicorn. unicorn. And today we have our unicorn here to, uh, with us, King Lion. Yes, I gotta sir. read your bio. Okay, okay. Graduating senior at Morehouse College, King Lions from Dallas, Texas, is constantly breaking barriers on campus, being a gender fluid student. King is often admired by students throughout the AUC for creating a voice for the LGBTQIA+. Ooh, Girl. they like, they listed all the alphabets. Yes, yeah. Community. LGBTT, honey. That's all you have to do, honey. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure that they are heard while still demanding respect. Welcome to our show, Welcome King. while you so ready. So they call you by King Lions, or you like Beyonce, just King. Bow down, bitches. You know, I'm just King. You know, everybody call me Big Mama. You know, just call oh, me King. Oh, my. <laughs> They used to call okay. me Mama. <laughs> yeah, yes, we are. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so we're gonna let you talk first. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, about your experience, what's going on, how do you feel about the campus, and things of that nature. Or you can just introduce yourself. How yes. about that? Oh, okay. Lord. Ooh, that was a lot. No, just just introduce back. yourself. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think the bio really did a good job. My name is King. Um, my biological name is Keelan. Um. But everybody calls me King. I go to Morehouse. I am an education major from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, pretty much. I um from the things that I do on campus, it's just like um anything that can I can perform because I like to perform. Okay. So that's from like talent shows to um what do you say opening numbers things like that. Um and then I'm a part of a dance fraternity, so it's very great. I'm Delta Phi Delta Dance Fraternity Incorporated. So yes. Okay. Oh, so you say incorporate. Is this on Morehouse? Um, yes, it is. And it's um in various places. Oh, and I'm also on the Mr. Blue and White um sec um court, but I'm the second attendant. Okay, Mr. Blue what and is White, what's that? Oh yeah, okay. So um each a lot of HBCUs have like a court, you can say. Mm -hmm. HBCU royalty. So Morehouse has a Miss Maroon and White, which is like um, Miss. Miss. Uh huh. And which Spelman, is, right? Um the Spelman students compete. Spelman and Clark students compete to be the queen of Morehouse, right? Um, and then Spellman had, had they used to have it, they got rid of it this year, where the guys from Morehouse and Clark would compete to be the royalty for Spellman. Got it, okay. But you're running for Miss of Morehouse. Um, no, well, I was on the court for Mr. Blue and White because um, even though I do look so pretty, you know, um, I still identify as he, um, which got is it. very unique. So. And that's, and that's okay. So I, okay, so I got confused. You not you wasn't running for a Miss. No, no, no. I was running. I was giving oh. you an example of like okay. different courts and how everybody has it. Got it. That was the problem. The reason why the court was removed a little bit just because of the fact that um, typically you know they expect the Mister the King to be very masculine, and they had me being very hyper feminine on the court. So got um, it. Okay, something. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so now I'm gonna ask you to be quiet one second. Yes. You know, you're not gonna get out of this. And I'm glad he's here to <laughs> hear me ask you this question. How do you feel about the policy at Morehouse? Honestly, as far as being transgender men, long as you dress like a man. You need to know. I don't uh -huh. I really don't. I, I, I can hold I can hold this in over uh -huh. here. So long as you for honestly, if you are going to attend Morehouse and I'm gonna say this again. And I am LGBTT. Okay, I am gay. What's it's the second T? <laughs> the T T T T. -T. <laughs> the T. Right with the T. <laughs> I don't know. But honestly, about yes, yeah, so I'm a homosexual. But I do, however, believe in rules because rules keep the world like it is. Honestly, and it keeps us safe and it keep people grounded. So it's a lot of HBCUs around here that um have males and female schools co-ed, as you want to say. So. For me, if I went to Clark, I would wear heels, whatever, because women and men go there. If I went to Howard, if I wanted to wear heels, men, women and men go there. However, Morehouse is a school for males. So with that being said, I think you should follow the rules because why are you wearing heels and wigs and things going to class? 
that's not the type of school. So for me, I feel like you're trying to be problematic. Hmm. And that's just my God honest opinion because for me, it's okay to be gay outside of school. Like, do you wear your best type, put on your best wig, your best red bottoms, baby, live your best life. But while you're on that campus, respect the campus history because of what the campus was for. And I truly and honestly believe in that. You don't necessarily have to be gay to dress like the opposite gender, though. Girl, stop doing that. I just said what I you said. You don't. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Oh, you I'm gay. Me. I identify as gay. Okay. And I want your opinion on it, too, honey. So how do you feel? I just said it. Like, I don't. When it comes to the dress, as long if there is a dress code, you have to adhere to the dress code. Got that. But if there isn't a dress code, just because I am a male or female that likes to dress like the opposite sex, as long as I identify with what I was born with, I'm meeting your criteria. No, you're not. Yes, I am. As, as long as I'm not going against Wearing the dress code. Heels and, but and, if I identify as a male with heels on, I'm a male that goes to Morehouse. I just got on heels. No, that's if that's not if that's not in, if that's me. not in part of, a part of your student guidebook. Then that's you need to make it a part. Otherwise, I'm going to be wearing my Prada. That's disrespectful. If you're not, and that's that's disrespectful. How is it disrespectful? You, you can jump in and yeah. Oh, I, I, I want you, I want you <laughs> well, um, he's like mm-hmm. pretty much. I I've been looking at it, and I think also too. Um, I come from a background where um, I have a heteronormative. Um, I guess you say family, you know, like everybody, church and things like that. Mm-hmm. But my brother who raised me is also a homosexual man, but he's very hyper masculine. And so it's been great to have him there so he can, you know, um, give me his point of view. So um, I think certain things I understand where you're coming from about, like, you know, there's values that need to be placed in the school. And the school had been here before you got here, you know, um, even before pride was pride, you know. But I also believe that. There's certain things, like you stated, that if it's not in the book, there's nothing that you can do at that moment. And I know, like, um, some certain things that people don't know, unless they're students at Morehouse, is that um, Morehouse students, we have to interview in order to be a part of the school. We have to interview um, a person, like an alum or administration, something, a board of trustee, and they Mm -hmm. get to see you face-to-face, either via um, Skype or in person. So... If you are a student there who is walking the hills, somebody had to approve it before you got on that campus because most of the time you are being seen as mm-hmm. that when you're interviewing. So I know sometimes I'd be thinking, okay, I can see why people are mad that, you know, people like me are on campus, but it's like if it was you let me on the campus, you know. So honest, was you in a, so when you was interviewed, you had a wig on and heels? Um, when I interviewed, since I'm from Texas, my interview was via um, what'd you say? Sky. Sky yes. Yes. So, but I did have on hair, and the reason why I had on hair for sure is because I used to dance in high school, like um, drumline, mahogany, and stuff like that. Yes. Um. So. I was a dance line girl. Yes, ma'am. So you already know your hair has to be done, and it was before the game. So I had on the even the uniform at that moment. Oh um, wow! To, did you have on the makeup too? Yeah, because of the fact that the game was on the way to go. But Morehouse is at a crisis where we can't turn students around because we need the money. And so mm. it's a moment where you have so many rules that you want to place on us, but you need us more than we need you. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that because they have history. That let's is not, true. Let's not neglect Norhouse history. No, he's not. I don't think it's disrespectful think, of history. It's just the fact that you need the money. How yeah, you going to pay I your bills, cause, sis? Yeah, because Morris you Brown do, has history, but in too. The day, but I'm just saying, like, come on now. Morehouse being Morehouse. Well, then those alumni need to start pitching in more money mm-hmm. if, they, if they have so much to say. And like I said, I'm not here because I'm gay. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. not here saying, like, don't be you. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like you need to respect it's the a history. Time and, place and it's time and place for that. Because like I told y'all, when I was in college, y'all are more different than how we are. Yeah, my and I'm just being that. honest. Y'all are like, baby, we here. Mm-hmm. And we was like, we here, but we going to be. I get what you're saying. It's a respect you know, thing. respect yeah. thing. I'm not saying y'all disrespect. I feel like y'all generations are more problematic. Y'all just want to mm. like, like I'm going to bring your rules anyway because I can. I'm going to do it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to do this because I can. Mm-hmm. Instead, be like you know what? Let me stop think about me and think about the history that came before. Because Morehouse is a very prestigious school. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's a lot of great people walked on that campus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for me, I feel like yeah, I'm gay, but. I can, I know I could still be a gay man going to Morehouse. I don't have to wear the clothes. Mm-hmm. Like once you off campus, like once your class is done, whatever, do do you boo? Mm-hmm. Put on your best heel. But I feel like it's rules for a reason, and you have to and, and you have to disrespect that. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like Morehouse saying like you can't be gay, you can't do your stuff. But when you in a class, you represent like you're you're some thing that's been before you. Mm-hmm. Plenty of men walk this 
walk them halls, you're down walking on, regardless of your sure. money or not, because they have good people that went there. Mm-hmm. I have a good friend who went there. He's gay. Okay, so and he's doing wonderful things in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna say his name. He didn't want to say his name. That's right. I'm uh-huh. just saying, but like, it's a lot of gay people that went to me. You know this, yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm like, why do you want to just do this? I we, think. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. You're well, the no, I would just say, um, I think the good thing, especially with Morehouse now, is that um, the difference between the um, the girls who went to Morehouse before um, is that they were at a time frame where it was you know, other things they had to handle. You mm-hmm. know, you still, it was a moment where you still had to remember, you know, I'm a black man and people don't, they're scared of that, you know. And now at this time frame, we're at a moment where we're coming where marriage is legalized. We're at a moment where True. we're coming at, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's liberation happening all around us. So we're at this moment where we're like, you we don't can have be to us. hide. Yeah, you don't have to hide, you know. And it looks like some people see it where, um, that you look like you live in a double life. You know, where you're at school one way, yep. and I see you in public as another way, you well, know? I mean, but that's your business. That is true. But because I think that, that, that plays into what I was going to say. It's more so of a societal norm. Like, mm-hmm. when you're saying rules, 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 if it's not in the book, it's not, if it's not in the student guidebook or handbook, Either it's way, not in the rules. Saying, but like, you're you talking about society rules, for, but yeah. society is changing, and you have to change with times, and, or, or you will get uh, left behind. Yeah, that, think, otherwise, where's Morris Brown? Period. But see, the that, good thing that was a money Brown, factor, though. But it doesn't matter. You, but like, still, that's, that's you were bigger. changing with time, and so mm-hmm. you got left behind. That's right. With your accreditation, all of that type of stuff. You were trying to do stuff an old school way. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. But in that, it has history, people. We are not going to neglect the history. And I don't think How is that right. disrespectful? I don't, I don't think you should be one spellman and you trying to be in, in, uh, in a, um, st- and a girl and be a, a lesbian wearing male clothes that's wrong well, go to happens. a school where you can do that i don't care i don't care and i'm and i, I, guess, I, I see no that's I, how i, I feel, feel. and i think and like it's plenty of hbcu school that's co-ed so why not go there and do your best life why go somebody's stuff and disrespect history like that is history how is that disrespectful because it's you disrespectful. choose to it's dress a, a male certain school. way okay but that's it still, is not a female but they are, school but they are men it, you are, yeah, he's a man, and I agree with that. He's a man. He, and he a identifies man. as a man. He does, but you're going to be wearing heels and wigs on I don't get it. I think the good thing is that um, the board of trustee has came to a moment where um, pretty much that they understand that people are going to be looking like me. So, yeah. you know, it, it used to be a moment where the school had a gender, I mean, uh, excuse me, a uniform policy mm-hmm. that um, they realized was very problematic, and they got so many lawsuits that they released the um, the, at one point the, you could not wear yeah, heels you couldn't wear heels you couldn't also you couldn't be trade and you couldn't be fish there was no way that you can be in there looking super hood and there was no way you can be in there looking super one but that's just either. like a private school you guys say yeah. like you go to private school I know some people who have went to private school mm-hmm. you're not going to private school what you want to wear you're going to follow the rules keep going but yeah, that's in I, the rule book yeah and that's, that's the thing the they, they took it out of the rule book <laughs> so at that moment and 2014, I came to the school fall 2015. Spring 2014 is when the rule, the um, uniform policy was removed. Ironically, that's the reason why I guess they approved my attire that I had on the video because they already knew that they were changing the ways. And I think that's but a I good thing. I don't think it's nothing wrong wearing, um, to me, I don't know. I'm very traditional when it comes to certain things. Mm-hmm. I do believe in breaking down modes and breaking barriers mm-hmm. because, like, we have came a long way as far as yeah. we're not there yet. Like, that boy who killed himself at yeah. 15. Yeah. So we're not there yet. But at the same time, like, I feel like we're teaching people, it, like, rules does not apply. Mm-hmm. And that's the bad thing for children to mm-hmm. grow up in. When the rules are there, you need to follow the rules what are the rules that you're talking about that's and, my whole point yeah and i think you know rules like you said rules are willing to break and i feel like if it was a rule there'd be more girls dressing up i honestly feel like i'm probably one of the only who actually do it on campus and i mm-hmm. think it's the fact that you know give black people something to break like putting on your seatbelt when you're supposed to drive we don't do it because exactly. of the fact it is a rule. I do it if I'm here because I could have died. Yeah, okay, to say, to say, <laughs> but you know, if you look so. at the numbers in the place, is that you know, if it was a rule that was saying that you can't dress up like the way you want to, you can't wear headbands or stuff like that in class, people would be willing to do it more exactly. often. Exactly. So I think it is good that Morehouse hasn't brought the policy back, but um, hasn't brought the uniform policy back. But the new policy that they have that states about trans men coming to the school is very, very problematic. Where it shows that. Um, that they see trans men on the spectrum of manhood, manhood, but they don't see gender nonconforming beings like myself on the spectrum of manhood. Um, where and that's a problem. Which is a problem. Because you got to think, like, all trans men 
they may not necessarily have the full sex change. Mm-hmm. So now you're in a restroom having female issues mm-hmm. in a male restroom. Mm-hmm. Like it's bigger problems well, than your day, dress. Like, when you like, are transgender, you know you not you don't have a female or male. But you what I'm trying to say is, so, so you there still is gonna a have hyper your monthly problems. masculinity so that's, issue that's, in that's to way just big. No, it's not. It's a it's a hyper masculinity issue that's more prevalent than just a dress. Because if mm-hmm. I am I identify as a trans man, but I still have female plumbing. It's some guy that's going to try to tell me I'm not a man. And they're going to show you well, by trying and, to rape you. another day, that's a part of the side we live in, damn it. You're going to have to fight for yourself. Speak up for yourself. So you can you fight know, and speak up for yourself you can, in that instance. But, you but when you are a guy dressing rules. like a girl, you that can't. That's a rule. That's a rule. Rape is a rule. Is. Like, I don't get what you're rape saying. Rape is a law. It is a law. It and you're saying that one side is okay or not okay, but the other side is I'm like, no, that makes rape. no sense. What? what that's what I was talking. If you were listening instead of trying to prove your point, you would have heard it. Yeah, now rape is wrong. What, what, yeah, what, what, do you what I was saying was, I'll repeat it. What I'm saying is we're sitting up here making an argument about a simple dress code mm-hmm. when the whole issue is the transgender. Now you have women that are identifying. I'm, just, identify I'm saying men. women because they have female parts. But we have men with female parts that are going to go to the restroom with other men. And when you have men that are hyper-masculine, they, some of them may be prone to be like, hey, I'm mm-hmm. going to show you you're not a man. And I'm and, going and to and rape you. F'd up. And it, but and I'm saying, like, we're, but the point like, is that should honest. be the that should be the focus on trying to make it safer for these transgender men that's coming here mm-hmm. or women that's going to Spelman versus really, a dress with some damn it heels on. It does matter because it's a damn school that has a, a, a status quo. I think mm-hmm. it's my new. And like I don't, and I and I'm sorry, it's too many darn HC, HBCU schools that you can go to. I think, and, and that's I'm the not problem trying to too. be mean or nasty. I get what you're saying, like, but the problem is now, that like, we don't have like the you just resources. Want to no, it's not that. There. I'm just saying that's the issue. Okay, let me t- uh, ask you, King. Yeah, honestly. Uh-huh. So if they put in a rule book tomorrow, mm-hmm. they said you can't wear heels. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want uh, hair, you know, some men go to hair, so I'm not going to knock you for that. Okay. Like, here I swing it. Yes, yes. But like, uh-huh. as far as heels, would you change? Not start wearing heels? Um, I probably wouldn't. Now um, I would have a problem with that. Yes, and I I can understand. I think the thing is that moment is like, well, I wouldn't feel like I need to because I've been grandfathered in already, but I can see them um, putting on the rule for the next kids coming in, and I can see the reason why it's being used. The same way how this policy isn't going to affect me because I'm at the school, it's going to affect the people behind me. I can see that for sure um, being used. And that's where I would be on the side with Koyet because Mm -hmm. if it's in the rule book, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the reason why they have it. But if it's not in there, then I should be able to do what I want to do. Touche. Let you guys got great points. I, I, I mean, okay, I can, I can give you that, sis. Okay. But, hey, guys, we're going to take a recess break. Stay to raw.com. So, the call yet to catch what's coming up next. The letter L. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Lipstick. And it's your boy, Cognac. And we are Lipstick and Cognac, your dynamic relationship duo, where we talk all things relationship every Tuesday. From 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On RollingOut.com and Rolling Out Live via Facebook. Y'all, what we talking about, Cognac? We talk about it all. We talk about the cheating, the people that do right, don't do right, the people that might want to slap your head on your mama, your daddy, your sister, your uncle. I don't know about slapping my mama, (laughs) but we're going to talk about it all, y'all. Make sure you check us out every Tuesday. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a fun time. Ow. 30 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes and 75 million with high blood pressure. Let's talk about the importance of cleaning the blood. 50 years of scientific research have shown that garlic, when taken in the right amount, can help to lower blood pressure, sugar level, and cholesterol, all while providing energy. How? through cleansing, regulating, and replenishing the blood. Garlic alone is powerful, but for over 41 years, we've discovered that by combining garlic, aloe, and parsley together, we help the body to clean the blood even better. You can clean excess sugar, cholesterol, and waste from the blood and promote better circulation. So don't delay, do it today. Get your bottle of Gap Pills, normally sells for $49.95. But if you use the promo word HEALTH, you get $10 off. Visit us at alloheels.com or call us at 404-996-6942. 
your host of Adult Conversation with an alternative twist, a judgment-free zone where we discuss all things, no matter if you are a ruler, a rainbow, or, or a, a unicorn. unicorn. And speaking of unicorns, we have King Lion here Hi, today. Guys. But before we get back into him, make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Lipstick and Cognac, YouTube, Lipstick and Cognac page, and Twitter, Lipstick underscore Cognac. Cognac. Okay, King Lions, we have a letter, but I want you to um, kind of chime in as to what we were saying, because we were real yeah. heated. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. were yeah. heated. And you were just yeah. like, uh. It was entertaining. So I said, let me watch. <laughs> okay. And no one. <laughs> okay. Front row seat. That's what I felt like. Yeah, but I want you to just, just tell your whole experience throughout the process of being a gay black man on mm-hmm. campus. And just, just tell tell your story. That's right. Oh, hi. Thank you. Um, I would say... Um, I'm a senior, so freshman year, starting freshman year. Um, really, you know, as you stated, Morehouse is a hyper-masculine school. You know, it's based on manhood and what is done there. Even from the moment of, like, you know, um, the program of how orientation is happening um, for, like, new students and even to, like, um, extracurricular activities on campus. You're not going to find uh, men doing, like, um, dance line or even men being on cheerleading teams because Morehouse doesn't believe that your job is to either play the sports or be in the classrooms. And so um, being a person who likes to perform on campus was a very unique space because I was like, how can I, you know... Um, did they at least have a Glee Club? Or they do. They do have a Glee Club. <laughs> but you see Glee Club, they all look like, you know, um, identical uncles. Yeah. You know, yeah. everybody, they all look like they're your uncle. Ooh. You know, And don't get me wrong, <laughs> they're big, swole, but they all are um, really but typically. Yes, but, yeah, but they're sweet but people, but too. <laughs> like, you know, most of our queer people are in the Glee Club, you know, but yeah. it's still the fact that you would never be able to tell if you see them, if you never yeah. knew. I don't like the word queer. Oh, well. Homosexual. No, like if you want to say this for me, I just feel like queer is just so right. Well, I think when I use the word queer, I know in the past it used to be um, something that um, was used as a negative connotation. But in queer, I I don't know if they're bisexual. I don't know if they were just men sleeping with men. So I don't want to just say they're gay. So it's um, like a catch all. It's a, yeah, it's Child, like an umbrella. If you sleep with a man, you gay. Touche, and that's see, that's my brother <laughs> said too. The end of the but, day, that's like going around saying. But hold on, you said it. the other day that if they do it one time, they don't they not necessarily not one, gay. Not one time, I do agree. One time experience, I do agree with that. I'm going to be. See, you I try something those one in time. The queer. I'll put them in I the queer wouldn't box. put that. I mean, hey, you know, tomato, tomato. What you say? You know? Yeah, <laughs> but to continue on that story, I don't want a man that that um curious. Okay, oh, I'm just that's just me. Girl. I like my men hyper masculine. But the girls can do it all the time. No, nope, because I know you have not heard me say that. I always say women should be under the same fire. I am not that curious, and I've never been that curious. And you see men, hyper men, masculine men would be that way. They would be like, well, you know, my woman can dip and dab all she wants to, you know. Or, like, even a thing where, like, you know, a hyper masculine men with the trans men come to school, that's my bro. They don't say the trans man is their bro, but somebody like me, oh, yeah, she, she, he, he gonna have to go. Like, you know, things like that. So, oh, wow. it's very, very, you know, that masculinity in general, if you don't have it in the right space, even femininity as well, if you don't have them in the right space, in the right usage it can be toxic yes um for sure for sure and that's on both ends um but yeah just just like how i was saying about masculinity i wanted to dance freshman year they have freshman stroll teams um and the stroll teams are very like baby frats you know looking like omegas looking like alphas things like that they were like and so Kappas. forth in campus you know they go out there they're freshmen though so they're um they're learning from upperclassmen how to to move you know and shimmy and do what they need mm-hmm. to do um and i tried out for one of those teams because i was like i'm a type of person and where me being gender non-conforming, I can get in where I fit in. You know, if yeah. you want me to be there, when I get an email that says, brother, I'm not going to be the type of person to be upset about it. Because mm-hmm. I feel like, at the end of the day, I'm your pretty brother, you know. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, okay. so I was like, let me get in here. Let me audition with the boys. You know, I might have bundles in my head. But I'm going to go out there and try to do the same moves, you know. Um, and it just was like, I was out there dancing, and I know I can dance, but they didn't want me because I didn't fit the look yeah. that was presented in that moment and sometimes nah, that's it, what i don't agree with see, see yeah. from there but I can, that's the unspoken rule no, that no, you've no, been talking no, about the whole time like, are you wearing heel stuff out there dancing? well you know at that moment i couldn't because you know exactly so that's what i'm saying now if you're gay uh-huh now, but that is an hold unspoken on. rule it like if, you that comes if you're that. gay and you want to dance hell you you can dance nah I, hold on that's just i'm not saying he can't dance so I said the honest. reason why they didn't cho- choose him is this unspoken rule that because you, you keep alluding gay. to. Well, it was just the fact that, um, you know, these boys are supposed to have a 
I'm they supposed must. to look like men. Yeah, you I'm and I both know women. about these fraternities. It's de- and see, also, too, it's the moment Child. of, like, I wasn't passing enough for them to be next to them, meaning that I can't take a picture next to the boys and look like them. Like, like you, you, know, you were going to look like a girl. Yeah, I'm going to look like, you know. The unspoken rule. I'm Missy Elliott. Regardless if I have on how much boy clothes, you know, I have on, I'm still going to look like <laughs> Missy instead of, you know, <laughs> somebody else. So I decided that, you know, I wanted to dance. They weren't going to let me on the dance team. I'm going to make my own dance team. And see, okay. now see, look, yeah, I like see. that. Now and that's see, something that I can't That's okay. breaking the rule. That is breaking the rule, though. To start your own dance team, you yeah, get approved? No, it wasn't, you know, every school has a registered student organization. Yeah. I mean, you have to hall, go through steps to uh-huh, do that. Each dorm has their own, like, you know, dance team. I lived in a hall called Du Bois Hall after W.E.B. Du Bois. Mm-hmm. Um, but See, prestigious name. Yes, yes, it is a formal alum. Um, but he, um, the hall was very, you know, the, the team was very masculine. They won all the trophies, all this type of stuff, and they weren't with me being on the team or any of my other um, queer gay um, friends who like to dance. So I guess what bothered me with that, because, you know, we have all different type of gay people. We have mm-hmm. very over masculine people. Yeah. They'd be like, huh, huh, huh. But yeah, anyway, huh. but they like to play with the boys. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? What's so, wrong with that? Hold on. Are they let not? Me, um, no, 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 no. This is a real question. I, yeah, like, I, what's I, wrong I, with them being overly masculine, but they like to play with to boys? To me, this is how I feel. Where did you got your voice like, hey, bro, or okay. hey, sis, uh-huh. you're gay? If so you um, a top, the problem is they're not on. identifying as gay. No, no, no. If you a top with a hey sis or hey bro or whatever, you still a top. If you a bottom with a hey bro or hey sis, you still a bottom. So for me, why does it matter how I say say my words? Like gay is gay. Cause mm-hmm. when a straight person like you, they gonna say they don't care how masculine you are. They gonna say you're gay. See, that, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, what's the point. problem with? But we have that within our gay community. And so that's what I'm trying to understand. I'm just trying to get an understanding. Like, what's the mm-hmm. problem with a hyper masculine male? It's nothing wrong with, with that. But don't get mad if they you have as your gay. brother over here who is more feminine. Than you, mm-hmm. Okay, and you feel like I it's see an what issue. You're saying. So yeah. it's the it's I not don't them. Understand that. It's more so I'm hyper masculine. So I'm like I don't know mm-hmm. you. I think any, I think in any moment, like any marginalized community, there's always going to find a way for you to argue with somebody. Light skin versus dark, yeah, you know, yeah. big versus small. You I know, see things what you're like saying. That. And I think it's like since we're already marginalized as being gay, it's like let's see how other way can we be in here, you know? And we, we're, we're, each other. we're really divided. Yeah, it is in a way. I mean, but in the reality, on the outside though, we look like we're you know a unit and that's all that matters because sometimes yeah you know um yes because if the african-american community was more like that we would be a little bit further yes, along yes, argue in house but on the outside we're a united front that's right uh-huh. <laughs> okay well this is going to be a good segue into our letter and then we'll come back and revisit this yes okay dear lipstick and cognac i love this show and truly need advice i am successful in my career have a beautiful relationship with my partner however i still have not been able to come out to my family about being gay mm. both of my parents are extremely homophobic and have always made offensive remarks towards gay people all throughout my childhood I am also Caribbean. Oh, goodness. Mm. I'm also Caribbean. Yeah. So in my culture, being gay is almost publicly not accepted. I've been hiding this from my family for years, and I'm ready to be honest with them and myself publicly. What's the best way to just come out and say it? As our guest, you get to go you first. You go first. <sighs> um, well, this is very unique because um, a lot of people I know have coming out stories. Um, and I never really had one because um, I believe that uh, my actions speak a louder than words. So I never had a real formal way to tell my um, family that I'm gay. I just decided to just start being my authentic self and mm-hmm. they will be able to hop on board and um, to notice those things. Um, so with that moment, I think um, the best advice is advice that you would use yourself. And I would give that um, young man or um, young woman um, pretty much to just like, you know, Live your authentic self, but give piece by piece, you know, to your to your family. Don't um, drop it right then and there. So if there's a moment where you use the word partner when you're talking, you know, um, there's a way that it gives them a time to actually think about it. Oh, he could have said partner as like, you know, or she could have said partner as the opposite sex. Or is she or he saying partner as a similar sex, you know, things like that. I think See, I like great. you. You have the subtle art of tact. Yeah, you know, little by piece by piece. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I am the person like, here's a pie, like you know, hooch. But <laughs> but I think, with, especially with your family, because you know, yeah, because you, you love them, you, you don't want to push them off. Mm-hmm. Especially because 
also to the culture that you come from, um, the Caribbean background. Yes. That um, I know several people who are willing to, you know, um, to do things in the dark, you know, and have so much fun in the dark, but, you know, um, they would never, ever bring it up. And they're willing to, you know, to lie on you, you know, because of their Caribbean background, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure that nobody knows what they're doing. And things like yeah, because I know I've watched a documentary, documentary about um, gay boys in Jamaica mm-hmm. and yes. how they were living underground yeah. on yeah, vice. Seen that, yeah. It was so, the Queens of the Gully. Yeah, yes. that's what it was. And yeah. um, I will say this. I'm assuming you're here in the U.S., so you have the the leeway to be a little bit more free mm-hmm. and not fear your safety as much. That's right. Even though in certain states or cities, you still can't Regardless. walk around. Like, yeah, you, like in true. Atlanta, I think it's a little more accepted. That's true. But you go to some other state and town, mm-hmm. they're going to be like that's using right. all type of F words, all types of whatever, because, you know of what you choose to do yeah so i will say i agree with you on giving it to him piece by piece like i've never been in those shoes but i know from the outside looking in everybody can't digest stuff and if Mm -hmm. you really want them to accept you and be open to you don't just dump everything and tell them what you did tell your mama if you're a top or a bottom or you're first or like (laughs) that's too much information Uh, uh, yeah (laughs) i agree it's it's well (laughs) i'm not gonna say anything on that Uh, (laughs) but you know just piece by piece, give it to them. Don't know this is you. You're mm-hmm. not changing. No, you can't pray it away. No, I don't want to go get counseling for what I truly am. That's right. And then walk your walk. Mm-hmm. But be uh, be ready for everyone to not accept you on your time. And you have to be open enough to forgive your family if they are not accepting of you from the beginning. That's true. Because people have to process stuff in their own time. Mm, that is right. Well, you know, I feel like this. You don't grow up saying, hey, I'm straight. No. You know, you don't do that. You're going to have to come out and say, oh, I'm a straight boy Uh and I like girls. (laughs) So when you're gay, I don't. I get the coming out story, but why do you mm-hmm. have to come out? You, you're you. We had that conversation. I'm still your day. same child. That's right. Mm-hmm. That you raised. I just like the same sex. So why have to make this big old damn announcement to my family saying I'm gay? It's none of y'all damn business for one. If you see, you see. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. You don't, you don't. So for me, I feel like that bothers me. Because at the end of the day, like, if my uncle don't like that, what the hell I do with the damn with you? Period. I'm not finna hide who I am. Or do whatever to make you happy. Because like I tell people, your parents lay at home happy with each other when you with them. Why they have, Why do I have to hide what I like mm-hmm. to what makes me happy? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't agree with coming out. That's right. I agree with being your damn self. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like me, if you keep it damn moving. Mm-hmm. Are now, we talking semantics? Like the word, like the wordplay? Or are we just no, like this saying coming that you should out, never this, have that this conversation? Letting them say like it, doesn't, it shouldn't matter. To me, because like I have an uncle who I fell out with, mm-hmm. and I love my uncle, but he didn't like the fact that I was gay, and that hurt me. And then I had to realize, you know what? Like, damn it, if he don't like it, I can't, I can't stop nope. that. Mm-hmm. You, you know have to saying? accept him and love and him. And I anyway. followed my first cousin over there and everything because it hurt at my core because that was one of my favorite uncles. You get what I'm saying? So. When that happened, and then it took him years to come back and realize that I'm still your nephew. Mm-hmm. I just, I just don't. I'm just not like what you like. And he apologized, and I was able to forgive. Now you can't expect people to agree with what you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do agree That's with right. that, but you do not have to tolerate disrespect. Let me tell you, it's a whole bunch of heterosexual people that I don't agree with who they dating, but mm-hmm. that ain't none of my business. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but I do this. Do agree? You have to be disrespected though. Yep. Now, yeah. Now, if you don't like it. That's okay, but when you coming out being rude and nasty, mm-hmm. that's when I draw the line. I forget your family. That's what my mom and my dad always told us. Like, it's one thing to be liked because of what you do, but it's another mm-hmm. one to be respected. Yeah. And you always ask for respect over likes. And if you yeah. ain't got to like nothing I do, but as long as you respect me as a woman or a man, then that's it. That's I right. agree with that. I like that. Um, so with yeah, that, I sure. say, young man, and being from Caribbean, I have some Caribbean friends. I know it's not easy. Child. But in a day, you have to muster <laughs> up the courage to be you. Yep. Because you might help your little cousin or somebody in your family come out because you did it. That's right. And so that's how I just truly feel. So 
Well, that's Just our you. letter for the day, honey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're well, going back to you, Mr. Kang. Yes, ma'am. I want to know about your dating life. You know, we have a relationship show. We need about this. So how is dating going to Morehouse? Especially oh, okay. on campus. With all the all ACU. Of, uh, no, on Morehouse campus. <laughs> the ACU. AUC. You the know, ACU. I didn't, you know, whatever. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Abilene Christian. <laughs> you got it mixed up with HBCU. That's what it was. <laughs> yes. But yeah, being but that you have an HBCU, yeah. then you have Morehouse, which is an all male. Yes. And now you are you. Uh huh. The what did you say? Gender fluid. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Gender not conforming. Yes, yes. Gender fluid. You know. So all how those was great dating things. the boys? Um. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. Well, um, hold on. Let me ask this first. Have uh-huh. you ever dated a female? N- yes. Yes. This going to get juicy. Okay, okay now yes. let's talk about the boys, and then we're going to talk about this one little female that you forgot about. Period. Okay, because you see I almost <laughs> forgot. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the boys, re- in reality, I think um, um, Morehouse dating on Morehouse campus is very much so um, unique. Um, by me being a um, very um, feminine creature on campus, you know, um, I been able to notice what women go through you know and sometimes I enjoy it sometimes just because it's new to me so you know the cat calling the um the walking the see they see me you know twisting and whatnot you know um all those things where they say Baby um, breaking their necks breaking their necks but they always come up and say that you know and I understand because um from the back I might look like a spellman night you know and even sometimes in the front you know I might look like and so when they walk up close and they hear me talking then that's when they realize oh it's king you know um, but I will also say that um, I try to steer away from um, a lot of my uh, Morehouse brothers because um, I'm known on campus as like, you know, mother, you know, Miss Gay Black America. Like, you know, that's the vibe that I have. Very pageantry and very much so like, you know, we hold her to a higher standard. And so I don't want it to be a moment mm. where people are like, you know, throwing my dirt on the table. You're like, you know. You know what I like feel that. about that? Damn it, if you did it, you did it. Yeah, and Everybody's not as open uh, as and you. And I'm just being honest. That what the true. hell you think? I don't get people like, say like, Oprah. Oprah having sex? What the hell you think she doing? Uh, yeah, That's and, not what he's <laughs> saying. I, but I, I get what camera. you're saying, but yeah. like, like, you are, you can, you like, can do that. I mean, everybody don't yeah. want cameras in their bedroom. No, you know, I ain't not here. I'm not talking about literal or literal cameras. I mean, like, if you had sex somebody say like a Morehouse, they told your business, you did it, so why be ashamed of that? Because. Is, and there has been moments when things like that happen, and I'd be like, okay, perfect. But, you know, um, I also know that me wanting to be an educator, you know, those are just things that, you know, you don't need to be having those things up. So That's mm. one of those rules that you're, yes. the, the unspoken rules. It's just something I learned as being professional. Well, I just feel like this, if you're not making videos and then all this kind of fine. stuff, then yeah. you should be fine. I think also, too, the men now, who somebody I sleep around with saying, is Oh, I, I had sex with him. Do you have proof? Okay. Yes, we have. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, um, not so. Sometimes I interact with Clark's campus, but most of the time it's either off campus um, with um, older men because the fact that they are comfortable with their sexuality and they know that they like what they like. Um, and then with the students on campus, I'm typically dealing with men who identify as straight men, but um, admire those my words. sexuality. They admire my feminality because gay men don't find me attractive because of the fact I have to look too much like a woman. Yeah. And so I know if I want to go to a gay club, I'm going to have drinks and to go dance. But if I want to find me a man to go home with i'm gonna have to go to the um to the straight clubs like club onyx and things like that because of the that's fact a strip that club. excuse me not that one then um but all the other ones <laughs> look <laughs> don't call him out he knew okay. he said not that i knew <laughs> <laughs> hey guys we're gonna take you recess break say to run our council you can cognac or we're on our facebook page because one up next it's a final call and Did you know 30 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes and 75 million with high blood pressure? Let's talk about the importance of cleaning the blood. 50 years of scientific research have shown that garlic, when taken in the right amount, can help to lower blood pressure, sugar level, and cholesterol, all while providing energy. How? through cleansing, regulating, and replenishing the blood. Garlic alone is powerful, but for over 41 years, we've discovered that by combining garlic, aloe, and parsley together, we help the body to clean the blood even better. You can 
clean excess sugar, cholesterol, and waste from the blood and promote better circulation. So don't delay. Do it today. Get your bottle of Gap Pills. Normally sells for $49.95. But if you use the promo word HEALTH, you get $10 off. Visit us at alloheals.com or call us at 404-996-6942. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Lipstick. And it's your boy, Cognac. And we are Lipstick and Cognac, your dynamic relationship duo, where we talk all things relationship every Tuesday. From 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On RollingOut.com and Rolling Out Live via Facebook. Y'all, what we talking about, Cognac? We talk about it all. We talk about the cheating, the people that do right, don't do right, the people that make one suck your head on your mama, your daddy, your sister, your uncle. I don't know about knowledge. sucking my mama, <laughs> but we gonna talk about it all, y'all. Make sure you check us out every Tuesday. It's gonna be lit. It's gonna See be a fun there. time. Ow. Hi guys. We're back, Lipstick and Cognac. If you have missed our lovely show with King Lion, it was really good. We have been talking about transgender um, policy with Morehouse, his fabulous life being gender fluid, yes. and we've also gotten into a heated discussion about rules, unwritten and written. Yes, we did. Yeah, we Make did. sure you guys check us out every Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Rolling Out. Thank you. You can find us at Lipstick and Cognac on Instagram and Facebook, Lipstick and Cognac page on YouTube, and Lipstick underscore Cognac on Twitter. As for you, where can the people yeah, find you? Find oh, yes. Okay, they can follow, follow me on Instagram, Miss Education. Um, that's M-I-S-S, education, underscore. So, yes, follow me. Okay, so before we get out of here, let's tell us about this one girl. Oh, child. Okay. I'm interested in this. Yes, well, to be honest, I think high school time was the moment where, you know, um, you see everybody just dubbed up, you know, cuddled up. So, I think I had, like, four girlfriends in my past. But I realized that... They, make they didn't do nothing they, they for didn't you. make me happy, and also I went out with them because they asked me out, you know. And that's when I that realized is a thing. That is a thing. They found me attractive because they like you're so compassionate, you know. You you just make me feel like you can complete me, and I had the qualities that they had themselves, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I I'm was here just for like, it. I said, well, I guess we can yes. go out, child. We can date. And did y'all at least kiss? Um, yeah, we kissed. No. So you didn't have sex with a girl? Uh, uh, no. I mean, don't give me a like, uh, no. one time. Uh, one time, it's fine. Oh, touche. But um, I do want to speak from the on homosexual <laughs> that watch <laughs> lesbian porn. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, wow. I love he loves porn. scissors. Oh, okay. I do scissors. Well, scissor up. We're yeah. talking yeah. about snip, cut snip. on paper. <laughs> <laughs> snip, snip. But I do want to say that as far as because we are homosexuals. Yes. And I do want to say we do have a standard to show our young LGBT youth mm-hmm. about things. And like I said, I'm not coming against you because mm-hmm. you are my brother in homosexuality. Yes. And you are my brother as a black man. Yes. But I do agree with rules mm-hmm. because I feel like we don't set the rules for younger generations because you see, like y'all are more different than I ever seen day and night. Mm-hmm. And could you imagine what's coming after you? Mm-hmm. So I feel like we have to set that standard saying it's okay to be you. It's okay to try to break down barriers. It's okay, but do things the right way. Mm-hmm. This is how I feel. Too sure. I see so if you saying. feel like I was coming at you in a negative way, please don't feel like that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, just very saying. passionate when it comes to certain things. That yes, yes. Sweet apology. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Yes. I, you made a great point. I just think, um, like you stated, that our youth should see a mirror, you know, yeah. especially like, you know, in their, in the future. So looking at somebody like you, they can, somebody, a youth can see their self in you. Mm-hmm. And also looking at somebody like me, yeah, a exactly. person can see us in there. So I, I'm very he- helpful that there is people like me who break those places. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. you have those youth, they can say, okay, maybe I can be that, you know, maybe mm-hmm. I can be RuPaul, yeah. you know, things like that. So exactly. it's very great to have that. Because when we have platforms, you have to realize that people are watching everything you do. Yes. Period. And they hold your word to a T. That's it. Yeah. So I feel like it's our duty to be like, you know what? Hey, you know what? I might can't wear this or I might can't do this. But outside of this, I'm living my best freaking life. That is right. And if that was my child, I'd be like, where's the rule? Okay. Where's it in the rule book? Okay, come on, come on. Got, We're going up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't okay. do something. Because if your, if your complexion was just a smidge of lighter, you'll be able to do it. That's right. And they'll have a whole law created just because. Yeah. 
Yeah. I read this quote, and I guess we can end on this. I read this quote online where they were saying, like, the difference between a black man and a white man. It had nothing to do with sexuality. Okay. So the black man is always on the defense. He's always thinking, okay, how can I move through life without getting hurt or getting injured? And how can I protect my family? Mm -hmm. Where the white man is always talking about, okay, what can I build there? What can I do there? Like, how can I make that better? Mm -hmm. And if you have that mindset when you are approaching things, it helps you to be able to navigate through this whole sexuality type of feel. I say that to say, we can talk about rules all day. But if the rules to society state that you can do X, Y, Z as a black man, you're going to be like, OK, I'm going to protect myself at all costs. And I'm just going to follow the Those unspoken rules. rule and the spoken rule. Mm -hmm. Whereas the white man would be like, well, how can I make this better? Because that's not written. So I can do this. So mm -hmm. where, where, where am I wrong? Mm -hmm. And if you have that mindset going through life, you will always be a disenfranchised person. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Well, girl, okay. Good Thank call. you guys for watching. Yes, Have a guys. good day. See you next week, 4 p.m., same time on Tuesday. And Hello. Hello. Oh, time. Yeah.